different people, I think, by and large. Now, that's a general statement. But I think too often we look at the don'ts. We look at the, uh, the things we can't do. But I want to suggest maybe we should look for the opportunities of things that we don't get a chance to do during the week. Let's look for the things that we get to do on Saturday. We get to look forward to spending the time with family. I look forward to having our church filled with activity. Young people running up and down the halls, screaming during church. Well, I'm okay with that. Because it means we have young people in the church, praise the Lord. I love to see our church family here together, worshiping, fellowshipping, church socials, VBS, whatever it may be. I love that time. And I only get to do that once a week. I think maybe I understand what God looks forward to when we come together corporately to worship Him. We read about a group of leaders in the Bible who had a bad habit of focusing on what was not supposed to be done on the Sabbath. I can only imagine they were a group of grumpy old men always looking for what was not to happen on the Sabbath. One day these grumpy men were watching Jesus carefully. Jesus called a man to him that had a withered hand. Jesus then says to these grumpy men in Mark chapter 3 verse 4, which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? But they remained silent. They knew Jesus was right. But they didn't want to admit their wrongdoing. Now what in the world does Jesus mean here to do good? I mean... I know some good TV shows. Man, going down the ski hill, that's good stuff. Riding my snowmobiles is a little post my wife shared with me last night. Riding my snowmobiles, that is good stuff. Is that what Jesus is talking about here? Doing good on the Sabbath? Luke chapter 13. We read that these grumpy old men were indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. The synagogue ruler said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on, the, on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites. Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath day untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to get the water? Then should not this woman, the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? The Sabbath is a day of delight. A day for being set free. A day, a day for celebrating. Doing good for others, I think, is a great option on the side. Setting them free from bondage. Sharing with them the joy of the Sabbath day. I believe the foundation for all that we do can be summed up in this quote. Every working of Christ in miracles was essential and was to reveal to the world that there was a great work to be done on the Sabbath day for the relief of suffering humanity. But the common work was not to be done. Pleasure-seeking was not a necessity, but a sinful neglect of the sacred day sanctified by Jehovah. Christ did not perform miracles merely to display His power, but always to meet Satan in afflicting suffering humanity. Christ came to our world to meet the needs of the suffering whom Satan was torturing. Kind of goes along also with our Sabbath school lesson. The Lord came and ministered to the ordinary, you and me, to help us out of our struggles, out of out of Satan's uh, lair. He came to bring us freedom, to bring us hope, to bring us a better tomorrow. Those things that we do on the Sabbath should be for the benefit of others, to meet the needs of suffering. The Sabbath is a special time for being the hands and the feet of Jesus. What could be better than meeting together on the Sabbath to share with one another the blessing of God? I love Sabbath school. I love Sabbath school. And here's why. Not because I get preached at again, but because I get to hear what everybody else thinks about these things. It's kind of like it's kind of like a, a crystal, like the quartz crystal that Robin used this morning. If it were a pure crystal and, and you shone light through it, you would see light thrown all over the room in all kinds of different colors. And it's beautiful. That's what Sabbath school is. It's that crystal. And as we look at the trees of Scripture through that prism, the beautiful trees 
are, are spread all over the room because everybody has a different life experience. And you can bring something to the table that I would have never thought of because I don't see through your eyes. I haven't walked in your shoes. I don't know what you're going through. It's a beautiful time to celebrate God and the goodness that He gives to us each and every week. It's a time to go together and say, you know what? My boss is being a jerk. And I need your prayer. It's time to come together and say, I'm sick. I need your prayers. It's a time to come together and see, hey, look how God answered this prayer. It's a time not only to celebrate and, and, and talk about the Lord's blessings, but it's a time to be real with one another so we can minister to each other. Church isn't a place to come show off how great we are or how much the Lord is blessed. Church is a